Hello, hello. Just seeing if this is working. Just waiting for some spotters to confirm things are working. I think it's working, so I'll carry on until someone tells me otherwise. Um, okay, great. So, uh, so welcome to CVCRM TV episode eighteen. Um, yeah, sorry about the hiatus from these TV sessions. We've been uh, we've been a little bit um, sidetracked with other other initiatives in uh, Vader and uh, also we've been a bit short on energy well I say we I have been a bit short on energy to do these they do take a fair amount of time and energy to to prep and um, present but anyway we're going to do a short one today and it's on a subject area that um, I think is quite useful we it comes up a fair bit we see f f the questions quite a lot but we uh, well I personally am not aware of much information out there on it and that and then the area of, that we're talking about is um outlook and civi um so i've just set the stream up today to not have my face there <laughs> um and um so you won't be seeing me smiling away but uh um let's just go on to so what what are we talking about so let's have a look at the screen so uh, in in the CVCRM world, there are two Outlook extensions. So so there's one for desktop uh, clients, which are not 365, right? So Outlook 2012, 2011, whatever they were, I can't remember the versions of Outlook. Uh, and there was an extension or a plugin for that. So those we wrote those. So we, I say, Vader, Vader wrote those and released those as extensions. Probably a good, um, uh, a, a good sort of seven, eight years ago, maybe even longer. Um, and they were well used, and uh, you could do things like file into file an email into CVCRM from from Outlook without needing to leave your Outlook screen, and you could create contacts and you could update um cases from those uh from those as well um so uh, just one other thing uh i've turned off the chat box on this time because we hardly ever had any chat and it was just taking up screen space so i've kind of i've kind of dropped it now uh if you do need to chat and, and there are questions then just add them to the comments and we'll we'll come back and answer them uh at the appropriate time so yeah, so uh, we had that extension, and then obviously uh, Microsoft started to online a lot of their services and move to the 365 um, family of products. So Outlook obviously moved with it, um, and that set now is known as Outlook 365, or free, you know Microsoft 365. And even if you've got a desktop version of 365, it's still the old extension so will not work with that version because that version of the Microsoft product is designed to work with um, 365 so um, uh, sorry I'm just reading some comments that are telling me to cheer up I can't it's Friday afternoon <laughs> let's just do this let's get through it but um, yeah so so those uh, versions those old uh, if you have an older client server version then you want the previous extension that we wrote uh, and you'll find that in github if you're on 365 so your organization is using microsoft 365 then then you need to use this new one so the new one is written uh initially by yap um of civi co-op and uh, probably some other civi co-op guys sorry if i've not mentioned anyone um but uh we've used it a few times and uh more recently we've done some work to it so um we just thought it'd be it's one of those that like i say we don't really see much information out there uh but we know that uh, um sorry one second um 
seconds and this is So yeah, so we know that it's quite useful and we know that it can really increase engagement with users in, in the CRM. So obviously um, one of the hardest parts of a CRM implementation is, is making sure that people actually use it because um, if, they, if they continue to do things that are easy in their email boxes and Excel spreadsheets and things like that, then not only do they not adopt the CRM, but you also end up in a position where you don't have the data to do what you need to do. So if you're trying to write reports or you're trying to keep case information or you're trying to record engagement for context, you can't do any of that if um, you can't do it accurately if, if the data is not there. So often if you'll get an email from someone happy, sad, um, complaining, whatever it is, um, or, or you know something pertinent to a case you're running, then you need to file that in CIVI. So we know organizations that have been copying and pasting stuff in and not really realizing how easy it would be to to do the plugin. So um, so that's why we um, do this video. So let's let's crack on. Um, so this is the extension. I'm not going to go through the installation process because it's pretty much the same for all extensions. This one isn't in the um, extension directory by default. So when you go to add new, you won't you won't see it there. You might see it in mine because I've I've got it installed, but it won't come up by default. So you have to um, go get it and, and install it like you would do with some of the others. And we've done CV Serum TVs and that where we've done pools of extensions. So you can always have a look. So let me just refresh this. So we should have um, we should have it here somewhere. So there you go. So, so I've got it now. And this is actually from, um, from our repo. And I'll explain the difference between the two, um, the core one and 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 the one that we've got forked, um, and why they why we've got to. So um, I'm kind of loosely following the instructions here. So uh, this is saying what it's going to do. Uh, does it say how you need to install it? Getting started. Let's have a look. Let's see what this. As our usual kind of presentations, we try and do it the way that we're expecting you guys to do it. So it's saying go and enable with extensions. It doesn't say anything about how to install it or anything, so that's fine. So I've got it. I've got my version here. I'm going to go ahead and install it. So uh, let's hit that install button. I hope this works. I've not tried it on this system, so let's just hope this all goes well. So there you go. Oh, ah. So I need the data processor. So let's. Let's go and get that. Oh, I forgot all about that. So this is why we do these things. So the extension relies or has a dependency on the data processor extension. And does it say that here? Yeah, it says it there. All right. So so let's see if we can. I don't know if the data processor extension is is part of the. Ah, oh, there you go. All right. So let's get that one. Yes, please. So we've installed the data processor one as we have that. So we're going to try this again. Let's see if we can install this one now. Yes, please. Convert to this API key. All right. Okay. It doesn't say that it needs that. So let's um, let's go and get that one. Um, just refresh this. All right, let's do that. And and that might be because it's our version and we've got the API key handler in there. Maybe we shouldn't have, but um, you might you might hear the same thing. So so it looks like there's two dependencies. So the CV com .cv desk API key and data processor so we've got those two now let's try again for the time lucky Rah, okay we have it installed okay great so i have it installed now it's all looking good so what if this is installed correctly what i should get so i'm just going to go back here getting started so um, what it says, I need the site key, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, we know that. Um, permissions. 
Uh -huh. So yeah, so permissions I need to do. So what we need to do is for Drupal, go to permissions and allow anonymous access to the Outlook 365 pages. So let's go back there. Let's hide this menu, people, permissions. Let's just look for Outlook 365 pages and we will make that anonymous. So we're giving basically what we're allowing there is we're allowing Outlook to talk to iCRM CRM, um, without any permissions at this point because the first point of the conversation is for Outlook to know that Civi exists and then the second point is for it to try and log in. So if you don't enable this anonymous then none of your integration will work. None of When you actually turn it on in Outlook nothing will happen because it can't talk to Civi at all. So that first conversation is without any um, authentication but all it's doing there is it's trying to log you in um, okay so I've enabled that now so what else do I need to do let's go back there so the manifest file so the way Outlook plugins work or add-ins they call them is there's, a, there's a, a manifest file which basically tells it all the core information it needs so now I've installed um, Outlook I've got this extra menu option which is called download the 365 manifest file and I'll do that and I get a manifest file um, let me just do let's see if we can do let's see if there's notes no, no I don't want to download anything uh, scratch dead if there's anything in here that I can use no, don't want to do that. Ooh, uh, uh, let's try that one. Let's see, what's this? Notepad. No. Oh, there you go. Right. So. Uh, I'm just going to open this file in a different window you can't see it so that's what I'm going to do in this so I'll just show you what this looks like if you were to open it so it's basically an XML file with a bunch of information in it so you, you don't need to open this you don't need to look at it it's just for the for the semi text amongst us you might want to change some of this information so you'll see why I might want to change it so when you install it when you install the extension in the add-in into Outlook, it's going to use that as the description. So uh, let me, I'll put some, I'll put uh, CBCRM, let's get rid of the TV, right? So so that's what we'll do. So I'll do that in my one. So I'm going to assume we've got rid of the, the TV thing. So I'm not expecting that to show there. In fact, I'm going to get rid of Drupal as well. I'm just going to say CBCRM. So in mine, I'm just expecting the word CBCRM to come up next to the new button that's going to get added in right so i'm expecting that so i'm making that slight change the rest of it you don't you wouldn't change you would just leave it as it is unless there's a specific reason that you're doing it but you would just leave it as it is all right so i've got my manifest file so i'm just going to save mine here cool beans all right so uh let's just check if there's anything else so i need to know some information but i'm going to come on to that so we we're going to use this deploying per user um we're not going to do it across the organization because in my experience like i say most uh, most small micro nonprofits are really not geared up to to do things at an organizational level in the same way without causing problems right so initially at least if you're looking at this video you're probably just having a look at how this works and what's possible you would just use this method deploy per user so for that i need to do these steps right so um i'm going to log into c365 i'm already logged in to a kind of client stroke customers account but with it's private so it's only me in there and I'm gonna do some some of this stuff now what I will say is let me just get rid of that so we're gonna say we're gonna do this oh, let's get rid of that so when you come into this you're gonna be presented with something similar I you'll have some emails and when you click on those emails you get the little more actions menu and uh, let me just get rid of this so you shouldn't have this so 
kind of kills the whole demo when you've got something you shouldn't have. So let's remove that. Let's do that. So what you would have when you come into Outlook is some emails and when you click the the little pop out you're going to have nothing there right so what we're trying to do is add an add-in so we're going to we want to add the cbcrm connector add-in um and like like i say the, the one thing that caught me out when i was trying to do this i didn't have any in inbound emails so my inbox was empty in effect so um if, if your inbox is empty it's really convoluted way to get the plugin added it's much easier if you've actually got some email so if you're setting up a test box to try it out on send yourself an email first and then from there you can go there get add-ins uh, go to my add-ins and then we're going to add a custom add-in right and i'm doing it from a file because i've got the manifest file so there's my manifest file too gonna do that yes install it it's trusted it's from me it's all good all right that's it so i've got now CVCRM. remember i took away the tv and the drupal bit so i've just got CVCRM. So that's fine, it's added. So now when I click more options, I get the CVCRM option down there. So now this is the first time I'm using it. So what's gonna happen is it's gonna say, I don't know what you're talking about, mate, because um, you haven't set your settings up. So I need to set my settings up. So I'm gonna just quickly grab, all right, let's have a look at what the docs say. So the docs say you need those three settings. So for WordPress, you're gonna need like something like that with your domain in there for for drupal you're going to need something like this so i've got that already so let's grab that so come back here oh, no, come back here let's put that in there okay um and then i need my site key and api key so let's get my record uh, I don't know who I'm actually logged in as here. So let's try. Okay. So I'm logged in as this contact, but I don't really want it as that. But anyway, that's what it is. So when you're um, when you're logging in as when you're trying to set this up you need two bits of information from that user. You need the site key. The site key is not specific to that user. It's uh, across your entire site. Um, so we need that. So we're gonna put that in here. That's my site key. And I also need an API key. So at the moment there doesn't exist one. So I'm gonna create one for, for, um, for this user. And that's my user, so I've saved that. So I just hit the generate there, just in case you're wondering what happened. So I'm going to copy that as well. I'm going to go here. API, yes. Let's do that. And save that. Okie doke. So now it is connected to my CRM system. So um, some stuff is happening. So things have started to happen over here. Uh, so the first thing you can see is that it started to pull some information. So this contacts tab is showing me the contacts that are in Civi or not. So this one um, doesn't exist in Civi, uh, sorry, exists in Civi. And if I click the contact icon, it will take me to that contact record. So this this is my um, contact record in Civi and not my user record, right? So my user record is this one. So it's looking up as a second contact and it's saying that contact already exists. Now, m who I'm logged in as, which is this email address here, doesn't exist so i can use this save button to save that contact into the crm so if i just do that um so here's some of the bits that we've changed right so before um in in if you just download it off of uh, the civic co-op area you won't get this what you what it will just do is go ahead and create a contact but our kind of experience of that is not always the case like a the majority of the time you already have that contact that organization you already have them in your crm and you might want to attach this email address to that contact or fire an update to them or do something you you it's very rare that you want to create a brand new contact so here we can search for um i don't know who's in this database but 
Uh, so I can I can search for contacts and I can put that this email address against them. So this email address is Vader at inquest.org.uk. So I can I can put that email address against them, or I can continue and create a new contact. So um, I'll, I'll go ahead and create a new one. So that's in there now. Now if I click the little man icon, I can see that contact's been created and it was created today and it was created by me because I'm the Outlook user logged in. So it's quite neat um, and like I say, this is all about engagement. So me not having to go into CRM and create a new contact and then copy and paste the email in is a is a big plus, right? So that's one part of it, is the contact creation. So then I've got the actual email and what do I want to do with it? Um, so this is the mass mass saving bit. Now I'm not going to worry about that because the use case for this is a bit odd. Like I'm not I'm not sure what you would do here. Maybe there's a specific kind of use store user story that I haven't thought about yet um, that you might use this for, uh, and we'll come back to it later if we do. But normally you're just going to be saving that one email to uh, to Civi. So if we go ahead and save that email, what we see is we get the tag now against the email to say that it's saved in Civi. Uh, if we have a look at the the contact records, um, we can see the emails in there. Yeah, so the activity has been created, and uh, oh no, that's not it. Let's refresh this. Uh, maybe it went against the info one. Let's see. Yeah. Uh, no, it didn't go that one either. Where did it go? Uh, oh, I have to select one, don't I? Been a bit silly here. So I need to select who I want it to store it, store it again, and then I'll save the email. So I can select um, multiple people if I wanted to, but I'll select one. Let's just refresh that now. Okay, so now I've got four emails in there no i haven't what is going on so date uh, thing why isn't that there oh maybe because it was already tagged so let's take that tag off save that okay so third time lucky let's see if that works Seven activities. Yeah, it is saving there. So, sorry, I'm being a bit silly. It was saving there every time. It's just the date threw me. That date, and it's thrown me before. So that date is the date of the email. It's not the date of the activity. So we received this email on the second of November. So those e those emails are being logged as the second of November. Um, and like I said, that's caught me out before uh, because I've always been expecting it to be a new activity. Just bar it line. So let's click on another one. Let's do that again. So I've got this file it into Civi. Well, yeah, it's going to do the same thing. So, so that in a nutshell is how you um, how you can use that extension to get activity information into Civi or copy email information into Civi, but effectively create activities. So what we've also done, you saw the creation and the contacts and the slight change in user flow there. What we've also got is um, we've added a bit about um, cases because um, quite a lot of our clients use cases. So often when an email comes in, you don't just want it to go against the contact. You actually want to put it against a specific case or workflow that's that's occurring. So let's just have a look at the components. I don't think so case is turned on here. No, so let's turn that on. All right, so that's on now. So what I'm going to do is just come back to my record and let's refresh this. So cases are showing now. So I'm going to add one to my record. Um, okay. And that's housing support. Okay, so I've got a case here that might have been 
triggered from whatever reason i've got some activities because there's a timeline must be set against that that um that case type so now if i come back in here and what i'm going to do this time let's click on the other one so it's still from me so it's still from parvis at vader consulting it's the same as this one it's still come from from me um what i'm going to do is now push that into CV. so now i'm going to hit the cases tab and what you can see is there is no case so let's just try that again why is there no case uh, 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 uh. Mm. I don't know why there is no case there should be cases showing Maybe I need to click contact. Let's just try it again. Let me do that. Uh, hmm, this is interesting. So I'm going to work through this a little bit because that should that should have shown me the cases that are related to that. Maybe because I'm the client as well, it's not doing it. So a lot of times we we don't want the case against the client so let me try a different way so i'm going to create a case against this contact as well this time i'm going to use the day referral save that oh, subjects Okay, so I've created another one and this time what I'm going to do, I'm just going to add my, I'm going to add the, my record to, to this case as a related party. Okay, so I've got effectively, I've got the coordinator role on this case. So now when an email comes in, let's just see the, when the email comes into my outlook, it should recognize that this person who it's from is involved in a, in a case so therefore the cases option should show some content and it doesn't excellent <laughs> all right well it should do and when it does then you uh you can file you can file that that um that email straight into the case and then it will show in the case activity like all other activities but obviously something's not quite right here and uh, this is a test environment so I don't really want to spend too long messing about with it um, but yeah uh, I think that's all for this uh, we might do another one when I've had a bit more time to to prep the demos and and just show it in a bit more cohesive fashion uh, and when we can turn the lights on and maybe share my screen a little bit as well uh, but I hope that's been useful. Like I say, we'll we'll come back to do these again more regularly now. Um, if you do have any areas that you want to cover, then please do um, shout on ideas.cvcrm.tv, and then we can um, we can make sure we pencil those in. But I hope that's been useful. We'll try and do more on the Outlook. This uh, document integration as well, and a few other bits and pieces that uh, that would be useful, like LDAP maybe. Um, that we've integrated with previously it's not really cvcrm it's more more wordpress and more drupal but um again they're just useful things uh so thanks for watching and uh stay tuned for the next one